Good morning. <laughs> My name is Aisha Ibrahim Badumasi Babangida. I like to call myself a messenger of hope, peace, love, and empowerment. I run an NGO, it used to be my mother's NGO, called the Better Life Program for the African Rural Women. And it's an NGO that is um, primarily targeted to the rural women. And we empower them with adult literacy programs and um, empowerment. We also have a soft spot for the youth as well. Right. So I'm going to talk to you about values, uh, respect, mentor, and all of that that should inspire you, I hope. So who are you? These are questions, this is a particular question that you should ask yourself every time you wake up. Who am I? You are God's creation. You are your mother's daughter, son. You are your father's daughter, son. So I think it's very important for you to remember this, that you are also a Nigerian, and a very, very proud one too. And remember that you have everything it takes to be successful because you are here. You were born. And it's important to remember that you, your life is centered to that. So I'd encourage all the youth that whatever you do, you pray to God. Whatever you do, you remember that you represent. You represent your God, you represent your family, and you represent your country. So whatever it is that you do, you can. I have a personal mantra that I say every time. I know it's quite bold, but it says, I will and I can, and I do. There's nothing stopping me from doing anything because I was brought to this world by God for a reason. So I'm going to make sure that I do the best that I can. So continue to do good and continue to inspire and remember that you can do anything. You can do almost anything that you set your mind to do. I have a cousin who I suspect is here. She always <laughs> she always sits and she says, but, 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 and then you wonder, it's like, but what are you butting about instead of doing, you know? What are you doing about it? You complain all the time and you say, what, you know? But you have to remember that if you send out a negative message to the world, that's what's going to come back to you. And if you send out a positive message, it is so powerful that that is what you're going to get positivity. So always remember that. Respect. Respect your elders. I know it's something you hear it all the time, but it's so, so important. I'll give you an example. I'm an example, for example. Every time I go into a function, every time I go into a gathering, I have some beautiful aunties here that could testify. She also tells me that what I would go and people will come up to me and say, do you know, we're so proud of you, you know, do you know that your mother, your father brought you up so well that you can never ever go to a function and you don't see the Babangida's children, they behave in themselves, they're respecting elders. That for me is a sense of pride and it takes me everywhere. So I can open the door and stand in front of my auntie and tell her good morning ma and that's it that's all it does respect for your elders and they would remember you because they would remember you as an oh okay that is my son or that is my daughter because it makes them feel proud and it opens up the door remember that always respect your elders wherever it is that you go I was at a function one day and I had a group of elderly men sitting next to me and then this guy comes up with his trousers almost here, hanging out, and then he comes up and he walks and he looks at everybody and says, hi, I mean, hello, <laughs> you have your fathers here and you're saying hi, you know, and that ruins everything. That ruins what his parents taught him because you see, they'd be like, oh, this is so-so son, so son. Maybe they didn't bring him up well. So you've just spoiled your chances of succeeding 
and you've just tarnished your parents' image as well. It is very, very important. Wherever you go, you see a Chinese man always greeting you with his arms together or bowing to you. That is respect. And it opens the doors to everything that you can imagine. You listen to advice. We are not too big. I'm not too big to listen to advice. It helps. We might have an innovative idea. We might have the best thing that ever happened to us. But if you do not listen, then chances are you're going to fall. Because these parents have wisdom. These parents know. Fine, you come up and you say, OK, fine. I have this idea, and it's new, and it's funky, and all that. But guess what? My parents and me are going to show you the way to do it. Because at the end of the day, you're going to come to me in the office and tell me about this idea. Now, if you don't listen to my advice, you won't get anywhere. So these two are very important in wherever it is that you're going to. Remember that. This is your being. This is your life. And as Africans, we have a reputation of being very respectful, and we listen to our elders. Please hold on to this dearly. Now, Two very handsome young men here. <laughs> well, one, two. <laughs> um, Mike Adenuga has a story. And his story was going to university. He had to sustain himself. And so you find out that when he was at university, in order to continue the university and to look after himself and everything, he had to become a taxi driver. And he was also a security guard. Now, you, most of you watch films and you see how the new security guard, he goes and sits behind uh, a chair and all the cameras are all there. So this is what he had to do to survive. This is what he had to do to sustain himself in the university life. And thereafter, he had a resolve that no matter what, he's going to succeed in life. And he did. Because at the age of 26, he became a millionaire. And most of you here, well, some of you here are almost there. So this is your mantra. At 26, I'm going to become a millionaire. You see, he resolved to succeed in life, and he was passionate about it. And that is why he set up the Equatorial Trust Bank. And he also was into the, um, an oil company, Consolidated Oil. And then now we know of the global company the globe. So these weren't ideas that just, they manifested into something. Now, Simeon, I had the rare opportunity of meeting in his ear. His mission is to succeed, but not alone, but to take all of you, the youth, along. Because he has been there at age 16, he was already established, so to speak, and he set up his company. He was a creative founder, CEO, chairman of um, Simple Pay. I'm sure you all know that, the PayPal equivalent in Nigeria. And then most impressively, he set up the UN for the federal government. And he's very young. And then at the end of the day, he, his mantra is stop complaining. He wants you to use the time that you complain and do something about it. So what do they have in common? Passion. They all have passion and they all have a drive and they have a sense of purpose, sense of being. And everywhere you go, they have one strong thing in common. Simeon, I had an opportunity to meet, but he blew my mind because he had something in common with Dr. Adenoga, and that is humility. Wherever you go, you see Dr. Adenoga. He's always bowing down, or bowing, to greet. You see, that humility is there. That respect is there. And Simeon has the same thing. So we owe ourselves this. 
Let's look at these two individuals and see that, yes, there is hope. Because they're not too far away in, up, uh, in background or in upbringing. And they're very, very passionate about their country. Simeon has an ambition. His ambition is to make sure that every undergraduate is employed. And those that are not, he has an, op an avenue for them to be exposed. So I'm very, very proud of him. And I'm sure later on in the day you'll see him. Now, you have an idea. Or sometimes you're very passionate about what it is that you do. We all came into this world with a gift, by the way. In case you don't know that, we, uh, we have a gift. And that gift, you need to nurture it. Right? So you sit down and you think, okay, what am I good at? I'm good at baking. Okay, fine. Let me see what I can do with what I can do. You know, what passion that I have, what gift that I have. So I'll sit down, set up a business plan, and start like that. You can't just wake up in the morning and just assume that you're going to be a millionaire overnight. You have to work hard. You can't assume that, okay, your father's a wealthy guy, let's wait for him to go, and then I just take the money and then do whatever it is and buy all the cars in the world. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Because you also have a future. And you, your kids have a future. So you need to work really hard to accomplish this. So you start off with your business plan. You make sure that you understand everything, you get enough information as you can, and that way you succeed. You start off very little and build yourself along the way. That is very important. So always remember that. And while you're doing that, the world is yours. There's nothing you can't achieve and there's nothing you can't accomplish. Because remember I told you that you were brought into this world for a reason. Now I'll tell you one story that um, I was subjected to some interrogation by a particular press young man that came up to me and said, it was in a gathering, press conference, and he got up, we're talking about rural women, and he got up and he told me, he's like, Miss Babagida, what gives you the right to stand here and talk to us about the flight of the rural women when you live up in a mansion in Mina with all the wealth that your father got. Now, for me, I was happy. They tried to stop him, but I was very happy. And I said, you know, sir, I appreciate, now remember the word sir, but I had to use the word sir because that's what he is. He's older than I am. So I said, sir, please forgive me. And I appreciate the fact that you stand there and you're very passionate and you stand there and say what it is that you have to say in your mind. But you see, I don't make any apologies for who I am, who my parents are, what they have, and what they have done. Actually, I'm very proud of it. And because I was born into that family, I'm going to use everything possible to make sure that I succeed in empowering the rural women and the youth. So it would be an honor for me to have you partner with me so that that way you can take the energy that you have right now and we work together. He's now my press man and we work together. <laughs> so I'm standing here. For me, this is the greatest privilege to stand in front of youth. I like to consider myself a youth as well. <laughs> But um, it is important. This is the most important thing I've ever had to do because you are the future. You are everything. You are now. And I said, you are the future. So take advantage of that. Learn and mentor and have a lot of leadership uh, seminars, attend. So that way you get it right where our elders didn't. The these are a group of young adults that started off in El Amin school, youth for youth. So what they do, well, they started off in El Amin school, but because they were already in secondary school, so they couldn't work always. So it became a summer project, an NGO. 
So that's why they go into villages. I actually, in The Better Life, I actually got them to, we set up a program called the Servant Learners. That's a program that we take a couple of youth, maybe 50, 60 youth, and send them to the villages and they're literally servants to the villagers. Now what they do is they apply themselves, they teach the kids, they teach the women, they farm for the farmers. So this also teaches them the value of life and teaches them the way of life in the other side of the world. Right? At the same time, they mentor. Aisha is my cousin, Aisha Sambo. She's a photographer. Now, in this program that we did for the Youth for Youth, she taught village youth how to use the camera and how to take pictures so that they can earn a living as well. And then we gave them some cameras to support them. So you see, you're also mentoring people that can't be given, uh, that don't have the opportunity to be mentored. Now, they sit down and they learn and they teach and they educate. It is important to remember that I can stand here now to talk to you because somebody else spoke to me. My father spoke to me. My uncle spoke to me. My mother spoke to me. So I'm passing it down now. So you are going to pass it down to somebody else as well, the younger generation. So you spread. But remember one thing, that you always have to maintain yourself. And remember who you are. At the end of the day, the world is your oyster. We have no place like home. And you are our future. I'm going to be sitting down here. I'm standing here. I'm sure I'm a lot of you here. One of you is going to be my president. One of you is going to be my speaker. So remember who you are and where you come from. Everything you set out to do is possible. Don't ever think that, okay, I don't have the capital. Well, you can start very small and work your way up. That is very important. And you have people that can mentor you. They're all here. We're all here. Use this as your guide. Use this as your tool and listen to us because it will be useful. The mind is a powerful thing. Now, once you set out a positive image, everything comes to you. Everything good go comes to you. So please, please be patient. Everything good comes to those that are patient. Thank you very much.